Once again, welcome back to Plot. Okay, right. Good afternoon, everybody. Once again, welcome back to Plot. It's been a a week or two, but uh, I'm getting here this afternoon just to uh, put a small video on. It's only going to be a short one this week. Uh, weather up here has been absolutely atrocious. Wind, rain, wind, rain, wind, rain, every other day. Cold, and it's, uh, we've got nothing done. Our two main big beds out there carried the taties and the, um, the onion crop. They were cleared three weeks ago and we still haven't managed to get on them yet. What I wanted to do was to get on and give them a a really good lineman, especially the one where the onions have been, give them a really good lineman and uh, that'll be left until next year. The top one, I was going to put the spring cabbage in here, but um, I've had a change of plan what I'm going to do, I'm going to finish off the uh, the bottom polytunnel where I've got half winter cabbage and the other half I'm going to put the spring cabbage in there because it's been a disastrous year for us for, uh, for autumn seedlings. The cabbages have just been absolutely rubbish. They were grown great first off and then they just I had a setback with the cold, even though I've had them in the top of the shed there where there's just net on the roof. I got a bit cold, I got dry when I was away on holiday. Um, so they haven't picked up, but I'm hoping by putting them in the, in the polytunnel. I was going to do it this week, but um, as I say, the weather's uh, atrocious up here. So I'm going to leave that for the time being. I'm going to do that in the next week's video. Well, I must get started on today. Um, I've got my sweet pea to sow, I've got my garlic to sort out, and the garlic and the um, jack onions are going in the top bed. Uh, once again, that's got to be prepared, it's got to be limed, I'm hoping to get it limed this weekend. We'll focus for some three or four nice days at the back end of this week, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So if that's the case, I'll get it all cleared off. I've got a load of rubbish on there at the moment. I was aiming to have a bonfire um, just the other night, because in October now we're allowed to have fires of a night lime. Um, as long as we don't cause too much nuisance. Uh, so I was hoping to get all that bond, but um, at the moment it's covered with polythene, old polythene off the bottom polytunnel, and it's going to stop like that now for another week or two until we get some decent dry weather every night, um, no wind, and then I can burn it and it doesn't cause any nuisance to any of the neighbours. So that's the plan for that. But until I get rid of that, I can't get them jack onions in. What I am going to do is uh, I'm going to follow in the footsteps of a few of other people. I sow them in modules. I've never sown my jack onions in modules, always sow them straight into the ground. What I always do <coughs> is go through them in the nice plump ones I sow, and they're little tiny, you always get a few small ones amongst them. I throw them away or give them away to anybody that wants them, but I'm not going to do that this year. They're getting a bit expensive, so I'm going to keep a hold of them. But what I want to get started on is the garlic. Um, now I've been cleaning a few of the garlic bulbs up. As you know, it's just one of the small ones that we had hanging up, and it's a solent white. Um, they're nice, uh, nice garlic, you can get them quite a decent size. Uh, if you pull your garlic and you've had them drying out, and you've got uh, you've got little bulbs on the bottom, easily pull away. Uh, you can sow them, and you'll probably get a you probably get a crop in a decent size onion in about three years' time. But you can sow them and uh, plant them out then get some sort of a decent crop off them. I've sown bulbils before, um, easy enough to do, sow them in a plant pot and uh, overwinter them in a cold greenhouse or a cold frame and they'll just grow away next year into a decent size and the following year you can plant them out again and you'll get a you'll get a decent crop off, off that year. But uh, that's the bulbils. I'll put them to one side, put them in a little box here and then I keep the combs, I like to split Split them out and get the get the nice big fresh segments. That's inside there. Absolutely first class. Always keep the big ones and the little ones you can go back down home and use for for cooking. So as I say, it's worthwhile just going through them and getting nice nice big fat plump ones. I'll put them to one side for the time being. Always keep a container handy. Then put the pips in the smaller bits of garlic bulbils up there. That's a nice one there. And of course, remember, remember which way is up. You got a little bit of a 
rough bottom uh, where the root base is and your top. So what I like to do with my garlic, as I see once I've sorted it out, um, I'll clean most of it up at home tonight. I'll take a few down home and I'll clean them all up. And all the big ones, all the nice sized ones, will go in a nice long row alongside the Jap onions in there. But what I'm going to do with these ones, now garlic is, you've got to be very careful with your garlic. Don't plant it too deep. A lot of people make that mistake of planting it far too deep. And what you need for it to, to segment is the break and you need some really good frosty nights. Now the cold needs to get onto them segments and it needs to really frost them. Freezing cold. You want a good 20 or 30 really cold nights to do that. And what will happen, they'll break. The segments will break with the cold weather and they'll, they'll fragment into in, in nice segments. If it don't do that, you'll end up with just a bowl, a bowl of garlic. You can still use it in the greenhouse, but it's not as nice as what you got when you got a nice segmented plant. Nice big garlic lifted up, it's broke away nicely into segments, and that's just through the cold weather. So never plant your garlic too deep. With these, double, same as any bulb, double the width of your, if your, um, if your comb or whatever you got, if your, if your, your bulb. That's, inch and a half so I'll plant that about three inches deep. What I'm going to do with these ones, um, I put a couple of one side, I've got a, a spare bed in the bottom polytunnel there that I haven't put anything in this year. I put a couple of pumpkins but they're not coming to much. Uh, it's where the early couple rows of early potatoes were. So what I'm going to do, I'm planning on planting these in February next year into that and a few of the Jap onions, the small Jap onions that I've sorted out, I'm going to plant them the same place. But for the time being, where they're going now, Give as big a pot as you can, like a nice big pot like this, and I'll only fill it three quarters of the way up. And I'm going to set my garlic into there, just like that. I was three quarters full, it's been three to one mixed with a bit of spare perlite. Once again, nice big segment, it's a, it's a lovely, lovely one. That, yeah. The rough end of the bottom of the base and your, your top nice nice pointy top end just make sure you're getting the right way up and just press it into your compost such an easy job to do so i've just done six of these i'll probably do another six tomorrow and it'll allow me 12 or 14 plants along the length of that new border that's in the bottom polytool so we'll put them to one side, all we need to do is to cover them just up to the where you normally fill your pot, about an inch below. So you're putting about an inch and a half of good compost on the top of them. There we are, now well, that's a garlic and they'll just sit in there, they're going to go in there under that mesh net roof and just sit in there on top of the bench. They need really freezing first and then they can be planted into the polytunnel in about February once I've had some really cold weather. Don't plant them in any area than that because what will happen, they'll not segment, they'll not break and you'll end up with just a bulb like I say. So that's the garlic's taken care of. What I will do next week when we'll get some fine weather, I'll get that limed, I'll get that cultivated, or rotivated and we'll put the Jap onions out and put the, the garlics straight into there. Now traditionally it's a uh, so on the, on the shortest day, which is December, 30, December 21st, and harvest on the longest day, which is June 21st. That's out the window now. A lot of people show a lot of garlics a lot earlier than that, um, which is, I like to start October time. Um, beginning of October, it's the 1st of October, 2nd of October of the day, so it's fine for me. I like to get them in and I like just steady growth. I don't have a lot of growth on, on the top, because when the winter comes along, we'll get a lot of westerly winds blowing this way, and it could damage damage the tops it's the same with the jack onions that's why i don't like starting them off in segments and planting them out unless you've got a cover over unless you've got nets which a lot of people do have uh, cover them from the worst of the weather and plant them out it's fine but mine goes straight out into the border so i don't want too much top growth on them for the winds and uh, the, the snow and the rain to damage them tops fair enough they will grow back in the spring but a little bit later but i like to get a nice slow start to my jack onions 
Come springtime when it warms up, that root system is underneath and they're ready to romp away. And that's the whole idea of the Japanese onions. Get them in now, build up that root system, slow down in the winter, not much top growth, then in the spring, they're ready to bolt away. Bit of weeding, don't forget the water. Water's one of the most important things, even through the winter. If I think it's dried out too much, I'll go along with the watering can, or the hose, and I'll water the onions. Um, never let them dry out, because it's the worst thing you can do, especially with the red ones. I've oh, got there. Three varieties that I always grow. That's from Sensu Yellow. Now I've just sorted that packet out. Uh, I've got the Red Electric. I'll be sorting them out tomorrow. And I've got the Snowball. I'll be sorting them out tomorrow. So I'll go through them. And what I end up with is the really tiny little things. You'll always get a few of them in the bag. I always check them over to make sure there's no soft ones amongst them and you always get a few really tiny ones and if you're going to push them in the garden nine times at the turn you'll either lose them or the birds will have them or, or they'll just rot away so what I'm doing this year I watch a lot of people online um, planting in, uh, in modules so I'm going to give it a try this year reason being I haven't got that bed ready yet it's still full of onions drying out on top of it so once these are ready to plant out and the garlic's ready to plant out, that bed will be ready. I'll have it turned over, I'll have it mucked, limed, nice and clean. And then we can put a, we'll put these in, it'll be around about the February time. So what I've done, I'm getting the multi-cell module. And all I'm going to do is to put these tiny little ones, push them into there. I'll use the Sensio Yellow, there's some really small ones amongst them. This year, normally I get a, when I send away, I use the same company every year, normally they're first class, lovely, strong little bulbs. This, you, you will get a, a few amount that are small and that really don't bother with, but um, and out of them ones, I'll probably end up with two trays, two trays of these. The century yellow, two, four, six, eight, ten. So if I get 20 of them century yellow, um, 10 snowball and 10 red electric, I'll be fine because I'll, I'll, have, I'll have just enough to put in that bed plus me garlics. So there we are. We're going to stick them in. These aren't going in the greenhouse, they're not stopping here. I'm just doing them in here, but keep out that rain. They'll go over there. I'll show you where they'll go over there. It's just a bit net on the top of the roof, that's all. The worst of the wind off them. And they're just sitting on the bench and they can just root away. Not too fast, as I say, like me, I just like to take my time. So that's the onions out the way. We'll get them sorted, we'll put them to one side just for the time being. You like see, hopefully I'll get, the, I'll get the, the, the main crop planted out next week. That's my shallots, I've just cleaned them up. I've got some, got some lovely shallots to go in. They can sit here. Actually, I'm going to, I might take them down home and uh, put them in the garage. I'll give them a good clean down to some absolutely stunkers here. Some lovely shots um, and I'll start these off around about the February time. Um, not in any hurry for them but I want to keep them nice and clean. Maybe just a bit of yellow sulfur over them. And that will, uh, I'll just keep them nice and clean. Right so I've got them done. I've got a tree full of bulbs over here that I've, I've sorted out the other day. My tulip bulbs, my small duffs, uh, titla tea and the large duffs. I'm just getting a big bag full from the uh, Lotman Society. So when I get the, the big garden down home and I get the big border finished off, turn it all over, replant them with all my plants that I've dug out, and of course a, a load of new bulbs to go in. And uh, hopefully we've got a first class uh, display for the springtime. Right, so I can put this on top of there, on top of them garlics, another tray here. And this is, a, this is another big job I need to get out the way especially this time of the year and of course it's the sweet pea now sweet pea you can sow in the springtime that's fine i like to always put autumn sown crop in reason being come next year paint pots plastic pots are all you are three quarters full three to one mix really soaked really really soaked and just let them drain off these were soaked about an hour ago and they're still pretty heavy with water they're still dripping through there so they're done 
Now what I like to do is give them a spray of chamomile tea when I put the seed on but I've forgotten to bring it up. Um, I normally have a few bags in the shed but I've run out so I'll, uh, I'll just do six today and the rest of them I'll bring some chamomile tea up tomorrow. Um, standard packet of seed. I'm never fussed about where I get my seed from because uh, sweet peas, if they're autumn sown, they'll grow really well. As I say, the idea being you get a first class root system for next year, um, next March, April, you can plant them out and they just gallop away. Now, I never soak my seed, never bother. As long as your compost is really wet, well drained, and then just plant on top of that. And what I normally do to a paint pot, three seeds to a pot, and just gently press them in into the damp soil or damp compost I should say just press them in and there's about 40 or 50 seeds in, in a packet so they're really worthwhile yeah, buying them and of course as you all know they make a fantastic floor for the house the scent is just something out of this world the old fashioned varieties are the best but as I say I just go into I send away for mine, same catalogue, um, and I just get the mixed variety. And I've grown them for years, and of course, incense mixed. Beautiful. So I'll finish that packet off tomorrow when I've got the chamomile tea. Normally, I'll three each on top of there. I give them a really good soak with chamomile tea, a good spray. And that, with the moisture in the soil, is enough to break them coats. Yeah, on the on the seed because they're really very hard and all I do now is to put a half inch of compost on the top of them in each pot just to cover the seed level them out and there we have it as I say, I'll finish these off tomorrow. I've done six to start with, just to, just to show you how I'll go on. Now, they'll stop in this tray because there's plenty of holes in the bottom. It's just a mesh plastic tray. They'll stop them there and they'll sit on top of the bench over there, which I'm going now. I'm going to take these garlic over there. I'm going to take the onions over there. And I'm going to take the sweet pea over there. And I'll, uh, I'll see you in about five minutes, okay? Okay, well, it's just there. I'm skipping a jump over from the greenhouse into the... Uh, the 100 foot greenhouse is still standing, uh, as, as you say, all that's on the top here is just the mesh now, it's all open, all the top ends so the rain comes through. This is where I've made a few of the mistakes last year by putting seedlings and that in here and they got soaked, absolutely swamped when I was away. Uh, but um, I, haven't, uh, I haven't made the same mistake twice. Uh, unfortunately this has got to come down within the next year. It's absolutely rotten. It's got a 45 degree tilt and it's uh, way past its best. It's bedtime. 20, nearly 20 years it's been up here now. Always when I think so. We may put a tunnel up in this place, I don't know. See how our uh, we're health is next year. But um, for the time being, you can't look at here. They are on a tree there. There's six in there. I'll probably do one of that six tomorrow. I've got plenty of, plenty of little garlic um, combs to split up and uh, Take the best ones out, the little ones like you see you can go along home, use for the kitchen, no problem, they don't go to waste. Um, the jack onions that I started on, they're up here, they're in the tree there, they'll just sit there quite happy. Now the sweet pea will not stop here, I'll leave them in here for a week or two, that's all till the end of October. Yeah, once they start coming through, once they start break service, they'll go into the cold greenhouse, down the bottom polytunnel, right up on the, on the shelf. And that's one of the main things, light, because winter time is horrendous for getting good light. So what you want, once they break cover, I'll take them down. I've got shelves, station boards to put up, and they'll go up on the top shelf near the light, and they'll just grow away, nice and slow, right throughout the winter. We'll probably get to about February, yeah, January, February, when they're about an inch to two inches tall. And we'll chop the heads off them, as we normally do and uh, let them branch away and you get a first class plant March and April for planting out but follow her all the way along um, my 3 to one mix as I say it's a really good meaty mixture plenty of feeding it a bone meal it's going to feed them right through the winter nice strong little plants 
You're all going to get your weeds going through, so as I say, every now and again, lift your pots out, check them, pull all the weeds out. See, an easy enough job to do. Once you start, once you learn your weeds from your seeds, easy to do. Keep them pulled out. Keep them nice and clean. Keep them sprayed if you need be. Uh, come out tea <coughs> and uh, nice and clean. If you want to use sprays, it's fair enough. We don't. We don't bother with any sprays whatsoever. Rhubarb sprays are about the, the most we use. And that's the only one we need to. But um, we'll try to keep away from the chemicals as much as we can. Uh, as I say, my spring cabbage over there is looking a bit poor. I will sort them out. I'll get a few decent ones out of there. Not many. But um, I'm not really worried about them this year. But, uh, if I get a few, few in, I've got some nice winter cabbage down there. I get a half dozen to a dozen spring cabbage in, I'll, I'll be well pleased. As I say, it's been a, it's been a strange year this one, and uh, we've had a few illnesses and a few setbacks, so maybe we'll look forward to next season again. Yeah, I'm well chuffed with these. If you remember at the beginning of the year, I've just got to, I've just got to knock these heads off. <laughs> if you remember the beginning of the year, I sowed some Welsh onion, uh, and that's a result. Absolutely marvellous. Fantastic. I've been growing in these pots for about four months, so what I will be doing next week, I'll be chopping the tops off these, cut them down, cut the seed heads off them, and repotting them into a bucket, into a flower bucket. Now, I'll only, probably only keep about four, and I can give the rest of them away to uh, family and friends. Now, that's a lovely big one, nice white one there. And what I have got, if you have noticed, uh, that's a beautiful red one, that. Colours and that's absolutely fantastic. So I'll not keep all of them, I'll keep about four uh, and I'll put them into buckets. And then they can stop in here. As I say, it's, uh, it's open, it's nets down that side there. It's all nets on the top, the rain's coming through. Uh, I've got a load of uh, plants I've been bringing up, <coughs> hostas and that, I've been bringing from the garden and they're just sitting along there on the bench. And what will happen with them is they'll just stay there until it gets really cold and then I'll transfer them down into the, one of the polytunnels just to sit the winter out, the worst of the winter. Because the snow and the rain will come through here. Or I can take them right down to the bottom of the greenhouse on the bottom shelf and just put a little bit of covering over them, a bit of freeze system it and they'll, they'll be fine under there. But um, yeah, it's a shame but this one's going to have to come down uh, next year, definitely. We're planning on doing it this year but um, as I say, I've that much to do. So that's our video for the day here, chaps. We've got our, uh, we'll start our garlics off. Uh, don't forget, if you're planting straight into the soil, which I will be doing next week, make sure you get the right depth. Don't plant them too deep, otherwise the coldness will not get out of them and they'll not split. You'll not divide your, your garlic. You'll not get the segments that you look forward to. you just end up with a, a round bulb. You can still use it, but it's not as good as the, the garlic. So depth is your main thing for your garlics. Get them in now. Uh, as I say, what well, I'll do that, I'll rotate it, get some lime on, leave it for a week, and then next week we'll plant the garlics, we'll plant the jap onions, I'll get the rest of the small ones sorted out, I'll go through my red electric and my snowball, I'll probably get a half a dozen of each or a dozen of each, really tiny ones, and I'll do the same as what I've done with them. I'll plant them in the, um, in the segments, and they can plant, once they grow on, they can plant out in the bottom polytunnel in one of the beds, and nothing's going to waste. So. That's my little video for, for today. Uh, spring cabbage to go in next. What I'll do, I'll sort through them, get some decent ones. There's loads of rhubarb lying down here. Uh, rub, but I want to take a few of the leaves off. Take the last of the rhubarb out. Take some of the leaves off and get the leaves dried out in here. Because we always use the rhubarb leaves for wrapping around our cabbages. All of our brassicas. We get a wrapping of cabbage. Uh, they get a wrapping of rhubarb leaf. Plant it in and it gives you a bit of extra protection. If you've got club root or um, vine weevil, anything like that, um, cabbage root fly, it keeps a lot of it away and just gives a little bit of uh, security for your plant when first planting out. I will plant some of the spring cabbage into the big square buckets that I've got in the greenhouse here. I'll put a few in them and the rest of them will go in the bottom, uh, in the top polytunnel. We'll plant them in there and uh, give them a good watering and hopefully we'll get, we'll get a small cabbage out of them next year. If not, well, nothing's lost. So I'm going to knock off, uh, the rain's just stopped at the moment, so I think it's a perfect time to sneak away, get back down home. This is where one of where I've got to I only popped up here just to check in the greenhouses, but I thought, might as well take my camera with us, get us, uh, get us started with the, um, the Japs, garlic in, sweet pea.
all in for another video and we'll uh, we'll see you again next week when we're, we're planting out hopefully outside if the weather's kind for okay you know where i am it's jeff Foreman on the plot if you want to catch up with me uh send me a friends request or private group now so or you can catch my video anytime on youtube <coughs> uh get in touch with the one on one my computer most nights and uh any um any queries or anything you can catch us on there but uh, see you all again soon, hopefully in a week's time. Bye for now.